How's it going everybody? Session here. Welcome to the Season 2 patch notes for Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone 2. We obviously have the full thing here released and ready to go. The update, of course, if you are, you know, early in the day watching the uh, update commence. You know, people are trying to slowly try and kick into it too, which is really cool. But uh, while we let the update come into full swing, let's check out all of the patch notes that we have upcoming for Season 2. And today we have a launch trailer. I'm, a, I'm gonna assume that the launch trailer is gonna have a DMCA music, so you know, but there's a link for it. It is you know up and about on YouTube, so feel free to go check that out. The trailer thumbnail looks really cool, so I'm already kind of sold on that. <laughs> so it's gonna be cool. All right, welcome to season two. All new detailed content coming the launch season below. Few highlights include Resurgence is back with uh Shika Island map, which is uh cool. I think it's Ashika, but I'm gonna call it I'm gonna stick with Ashika. But yeah, we got the new new uh, small map is back, which is nice. Uh, Path of Ronin challenges in uh, NW2 and Warzone 2 for rewards, including a fan favorite weapon. That's cool. Vanquish your opponents like a true warrior with a new operator and five new weapons during the season, three of which are available for free in the battle pass. I actually love that. Uh, a new personal watercraft vehicle. Fun. All right. So here is the pass. The, the photo for this looks really cool. I'm already kind of sold on it. <laughs> I think it's actually really sick. All new battle pass for season two, including three weapons, plenty of rewards, and uh, for forging the path on top of new rewards, you have new overall polish and usability of the battle pass for season two. So I know that a lot of people were talking about season one's kind of aesthetic UI interface, all those things that were kind of coming into play. People weren't really the biggest fan of some of the stuff. I mean, I personally liked it because once I got familiar with it, it just kind of made sense for me. Um, but we'll take a look, of course, and see what, what further details they went into about um you know the interface and everything with the game as well so we'll you know we'll crack into that okay so events path of ronin is a new event this is actually really cool <laughs> i like i like how it's like a sunset battle between the two samurais in a way that's actually really sick integrity respect courage honor compassion sincerity and loyalty that's kind of cool all right the seven virtues of bushido okay so each of the seven challenges come with a reward for completion, which include a skin, blueprint, charm, and more. First three challenges go live on the launch. Oh, okay. That makes sense, actually. Oh, I see. Progression. Start season two, prestige rank cap will not be going up to nine with the capping 450, which is crazy. It's, so, it's such a high number now, I feel. Okay, so we got 450 new level max. So I guess um the prestige one... Uh, season one prestige max was like 250, so now it's going up 200 other levels, which is just a lot. New weapons. Oh, we got the ISO hemlock. Oh, so it's the ISO but the assault rifle version. That's cool. Powerful and enhanced rifle from the expanded firearms designed to take off both 5.56 and subsonic 300 BLK ammunition, providing battlefield advantage and integration. Oh, I, interesting. So it's going to have 5.56 rounds, which means that it'll probably feel a bit similar to the, the Lachlan 5.56. So I'm guessing that it's going to be um, like a medium feel weapon. It looks kind of small in the in the hands of the, of the operator. But of course, when you obviously customize it and add parts to it too, it's probably going to add a lot of more things to it. So it'll probably be suitable for like a mid-range combat gun. But also it has 300 um, blackout rounds. So... It's gonna have the same aesthetic as the um, like the Fennec does, where essentially, you know, when you get you know kills from a from any part of the game, you probably can't see the hit markers or the um, the the death marker when you get a kill, which is cool. So I also hemlock. That's cool. We got the KV broadside. We got a shotgun actually. Okay, bringing the power of a 12 gauge to the cast off platform. It's a cast off gun. Okay, fastest firing semi-auto firearm in the shotgun class so it targets a close range of impunity can be acquired for free in the battle pass so here's the thing um when the bass p chimera and m13b came out they all shared i think this right they shared the same platform but they're not tied in the platform so you can't unlock the bass p to essentially unlock the chimera and the m13b even though they're in the same platform. So since they just literally confirmed that um, the KV broadside is a shotgun that's part of the cast off platform, which is where all the, the AKs are. So the 7.62, the 5.45, the Minibok, the Vaznev. So I'm wondering if it'll appear in the uh, in the tree for that platform or if it'll be separated. I hope it, I hope it does get uh, included 
where you can see how far it stems because i feel like down the line when there's like 10 guns under one platform when you just see the full family tree of it all i think that'd be really cool for them to showcase that um because i know for sure that down the line they're going to introduce the dragon off and make that a cast off sniper rifle basically or marksman rifle even and they're going to add it to that platform too so i think it'd be really cool to just essentially kind of keep this one in family line with the uh whole cast off platform so we'll see but the gun looks cool we got dual kodachis okay powerful melee weapon that can move towards the target with a longer range attack okay so essentially commando <laughs> each swipe has an impressive range of faster forward motion towards enemies compared to the knife melee weapon though this comes at slight cost of slower strafe and sprint speed oh, okay so you attack faster up close but you move slower in general i mean i can kind of sort of see that being like a trade-off but i still don't think so because um this just immediately gives me cali six vibes and people were still really fast with those we'll see though Oh, we got the crossbow. Silent and agile high performance crossbow with fires 20 inch bolts with exceptional uh, lethality, inclusive customization, distinct functionality, and unique ammunition types. Put the weapon into its own class. Standard 20 uh, inch bolts are recoverable and are undetected by trophy systems. Can be acquired by completing all seven paths of the Roni event challenges or purchased via the store bundle. Okay, so we officially have ourselves the crossbow, which I think is a constant. Um, you know, it's been a constant staple of the game since, like, Black Ops 1. So, you know, and every single game that's ever come out from, like, Warzone and Modern Warfare Remake to today. Like, I mean, I guess, like, with Vanguard as an exception, I guess, but still. Um, has always included a crossbow. So, it being part of the Marksman Rifle uh, classification makes total sense. Because it's not a sniper rifle, obviously. But I'm pretty sure it's going to have explosive rounds. And, you know, I, I'd be honestly curious to see if it can have... Um, this is just like me kind of tidbitting like a little to the side, like sidebarring it. But if you can put subsonic or um, snapshot arrows or snapshot bolts on this and use it as like a utility weapon, that'd be really, really cool. But I think it'll kind of maintain the same powerful functionality of it being um, explosive bolts and incendiary bolts. So having the crossbow in the game is definitely a good addition. So I like that. Okay, so we got the crossbow, the dual swords, the sh shotgun, and an assault rifle. So I'm I'm really glad to see these uh, get included to the game as well. And these are only like you know technically it's three weapons in the melee. So I guess there's two more that we're going to get in the future too. So that's going to be cool. Um, okay, weapon tuning update. Our goal for weapon tuning has always been to deliver experience that provides players with deep customization for their favorite weapons, building a unique loadout for precise personal play style. After the weapon tuning season one. We want to offer more value to players by elevating the pros and reducing the cons of tuning attributes. We are committed to making the system more rewarding for players going forward without sacrificing overall and balance across the game. The results of the adjustment will be generally be felt as an increase in overall impact of attachments with the effects of attachment tuning. Okay, so I guess um, people felt that weapon tuning wasn't as impactful when you actually tuned it, which is actually fair though, because a lot of the time when it comes to uh, the game so far since Warzone 2 released, you really only needed the attachments for it to really showcase like its value. Um, tuning isn't like a requirement. It just kind of like goes, it, it lets it go from like 100% to like 110, you know, but I think it felt like 105. So it, it wasn't like a super, super crazy ordeal. Um, but of course, some guns, if you, if you basically took one stat, like recoil control, and just put everything you could possibly put into recoil stability and control, then it usually worked out pretty well for itself. Um, people, I don't know if people have tested the waters with this just yet because of Warzone 2 being Warzone 2, but if you actually made a weapon and you maximized it for a sprint to fire, you actually feel the difference for that extremely high compared to if you don't tune the attachments. And I've noticed that when I was using the, um, the Bass P. Bass P has insanely high sprint to fire when you tune the gun for a sprint to fire. Um, but it's also a short range SMG in general. But again, I don't I don't know if people have been really testing the waters, but it doesn't matter anymore, right? Because now the tuning update came out. People are going to be able to really feel the effects, I think. So it'll probably feel more like 120 versus 105 slash 110 with weapon tuning. So with tuning balances in mind, they enabled tuning for laser attachments. That's interesting. Tuning sliders have been updated for numerous attachments. Okay. Some beneficial tuning attributes to magnitudes have increased. Some harmful tuning attributes for magnitudes have been decreased. And season one pro blue uh pro tuned blueprints have been received performance adjustments. Okay, so yeah, um, this makes sense actually. Laser attachments is 
I don't know how I, I don't know how to feel about it. I don't know if I like dislike that it didn't have it or liked it that it didn't. I don't actually know. Um, I can see why it makes logical sense why it wouldn't have tuning because you're just putting a, a laser on the on it and that's like literally it. But I can understand that laser attachments are gonna also include uh, tuning to it. Like it, it's definitely possible to tune a laser. Obviously, like it's a physical sight that you put on the gun. Um, but I think I was also, I think I just accepted that it was okay that it couldn't be tuned. But now that it can be tuned, I'd be very curious to see what parameters you can add to the tuning to make it more, um, you know, more beneficial to the gun's kit. My mind is going to take a guess and say that you're going to be able to uh, change like weapon stability, gun kick control, ADS, or sprint to fire. I think those are going to be like the big, the, the four that'll work for it. So I think a lot of guns that are going to need to use lasers are going to really thrive on it. So that's going to be really awesome. And also the fact that they increase the magnitude for beneficial ones are really good. Cause again, the scale goes either way. It's not just for one aspect, right? Like you don't always use one laser for just one parameter. You can use the same laser for different parameters for different guns. And I think that's really cool. Um, so we'll see. And then we got weapon balancing. So assault rifles, Okay, so they still, okay, okay. I, I just wasn't sure if they were going to show the like the numerical damage I put for it or not, but they kind of just give you the general like TLDR for it, which is fine. So the M13B got damage increase at mid-range and upper torso damage, which is actually nice because M13B came out and felt a little bit underpowered um, in comparison to a lot of the other assault rifles we have in the game. It, 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 was, it should have been able to hit a lot harder, even though it does have a high fire rate. Um, the recoil control for it is very nice, but you do spend a lot of time like hitting targets and kind of questioning what's going on. So the increase in the mid damage range uh, and upper torso will be really uh, welcoming for the M13B. Castle 762 has a small damage reduction and added additional long range damage fall off. So, okay. The 762 is not a gun that I think I frequently see, but I do see it used once in a while and it does hit pretty hard. So it's actually a pretty decent gun. Um, one thing that people I think have also been trying to, and this makes sense for the additional uh, long range damage fall off is that um, the gun actually thrives kind of decently in semi-auto form. I don't know if people have actually tried it out though, but semi-auto is actually pretty, it's pretty, it kind of has like a, like, a, like a strong stopping power to it. So um, 7.62 change makes sense. 5.56 has an increase in the auto rate of fire, which actually makes a lot of sense because it's slower, sort of, than it fully automatic. It, it was weird. So increasing the semi-auto rate of fire is going to be nice because, um, again, you can actually, I think the 5.56 now can sort of be built like a like a battle rifle, which is great because the 7.62 is the battle rifle version. This is the assault rifle version. So that's going to be nice. Um, they increase the auto rate of fire for the M4 and semi-auto form too, which is interesting because... I think right now the M4 is the gun. I hate to say it out loud because it's old faithful, but I think right now it's the one that's performing the least out of all these rifles. It's just not really doing what we need it to do, but maybe that'll change with the weapon tuning. That's why I feel like it makes sense that they didn't just increase a lot of damage stuff because like the M13B definitely didn't hit as hard as it should. Um, but at the same time, the way how these guns are going to be able to benefit more from weapon tuning, they don't really need to make a lot of changes for this season until we at least see how well the weapon tuning affects a lot of the weapons uh, moving forward for every gun in the game. So we'll see how that kind of kicks in. Um, and for the SCB-556, facing the issue with the single tap mod magazine attachment, which caused weapons to deal considerably less damage to the upper left leg. <laughs> okay. That's that's a very specific, uh, that sounds more like a bug than it is obviously like a weapon balancing thing. So, I mean, the STB is a good weapon as well. It, the, the gun is like fine uh, if you, you want to use it, but the that's such a specific bug that the gun had. I never used a single tap mod, but um, you know, it, it's there. Okay, battle rifles, 762. Ooh, okay. Decreased full automatic um, head and torso damage. Increased semi-auto upper torso damage, increased semi-auto rate of fire, reduced full auto recoil, increased damage on long range, and added minimum damage against armor. So this gun definitely has seen a lot of checks and balances across the board, like significantly throughout, even from the beta. Um, so they clearly want this gun to be able to have the hybrid stance that the 5.56 also should have. So... 
you know, if you're going to use it fully automatic, it's not going to hit as hard. You kind of sort of have to use it in semi-auto mode as it's designed as a battle rifle. But the option to use it in fully auto is also great. So I actually like that a lot. Um, increasing the semi-auto rate of fire actually is going to be really huge. This is definitely going to give me the like the old FAL style of how the gun should function. Um, so I'm definitely excited to see how that will play out, especially when you tune this gun to, again, with the weapon tuning, a lot of these parameters and stats are going to increase significantly. So this gun is going to secretly, I, I mean, I don't want to say it out loud, but I'm, I'm getting a DMR vibe a little bit from this gun. So we'll see how, how it uh, kicks into full gear. Um, and also they reduced the full auto recoil, which is also like a very interesting detail because they want the gun to have better recoil when you're using it fully automatic, but they also want the gun to thrive semi-automatic as well. So I think that they're, they're very well aware that this gun needs to be able to not thrive in the same environment, regardless of which version you use the gun in. So if you're going to use it in semi-auto, it's going to work semi-auto like properly well and strong. And if you put it in full auto, then it's going to work less in the range that it's designed to in semi-auto, but it'll work, you know, it'll cover both, uh, it'll cover both ranges that it's designed to be used as the weapon that it is. So that's actually great. So I think that the Lockman 762 is going to become a very competitive and worthy weapon to be using in Warzone 2 as a whole. So I'm excited for that. f -Tech Recon. Okay. They decreased the full auto upper torso damage which is fine. Uh, they sped up the ADS time, which is actually nice. They reduced the full auto recoil, uh, increased close range damage distance, increased lower torso damage multiplier, and the added minimum damage against armor. So the FTAC recon kind of seen the same problem, but the problem with the recon now is that, um, the retac, the, uh, the recon is, it has a, okay, as a battle rifle, I think it has the lowest magazine size across all the battle rifles. Using this gun, in fully auto is extremely difficult um but if you can you just if you can build it out in semi-auto form with the 10 round mag even there were 15 round mag it is gone it it's it's pretty good um so the fact that they also spent the ads time though is going to be really welcoming and also increasing the damage distance for close range is going to also let the game let the gun thrive in mid-range combat as well and even at closer range too because I feel like people have been running around with hollow sights more so than they have with like VLKs or four time scopes or five time scopes. I use a five time scope on this gun and I think that it's great. Um, but to use it with a holographic sight is going to be actually very nice considering all these changes. So FTAC is definitely going to be in a very good position. Uh, so it looks like overall they really put a big, uh, big buff on the uh, battle rifles. So SO14 increased the semi auto rate of fire, increased long range damage, reduced the headshot damage for semi auto. And they added a minimum against armor. SL14 is definitely the least popular gun out of all the battle rifles. It's, I think, personally, it's it's like decent. Um, I haven't gotten mine fully leveled up yet, so I want to I want to max out this weapon and also put the tuning in mind because I think if you tune this weapon, it has a potential to be very powerful. Um, because this one has like a like a really huge magazine, so I think, and it also it's actually pretty strong, uh, in fully auto. And this I think so far is the only battle rifle that hasn't been affected by the fully auto aspect of the gun so i think um you know it has the potential to do some really powerful damage and the tac v they decreased the mid-range damage increases semi-auto torso damage reduced semi-auto leg damage <laughs> decreased full auto head damage twice apparently and reduced semi-auto rate of fire so the tac v is definitely like the choice of weaponry out of all the battle rifles compared to the 762 um this gun is extremely powerful for what it was worth. It kind of reminded me of, uh, if you ever used the 2019 M4 with the 10 round mag and fully auto, that gun like used to melt people. This gun is that gun, or at least it was that gun current in that moment in time. So the attack V kind of sort of like, it made sense that they would nerf it. I still think though that it's going to thrive very strongly in uh, semi-auto form, but they, they obviously want you to like, focus a bit on using it in semi-auto more so than full auto because not every battle rifle should be used in fully auto but the option should be present for what it was worth so i think that the tech v might be able to um again like still find a comfortable spot but it's not gonna seem like it's broken i don't know if it was broken before this change but i think that it was something that you can clearly see it was showing its place for for some situations in battle that was very like questionable so tech v change is uh is cool Okay, 
for the uh, handguns, we got the X13 Auto. They reduce the damage while using a Kimbo. They increase lower body damage and increase close range damage and damage distances. So this is a, this is a fair understanding because the X13 Autos, you know, they're basically like MW2 Glock 18s right now. Like they were very, very, they're still very powerful. I think even still today, um, I think that this trade is literally just so that you can't use the gun at a far distance versus using it up close i think up close it's still gonna melt so if you're in a room and you're clearing with the room with these guns you're gonna do just as well as you did before you might even do even better but if you're like you know 25 meters away from somebody with this pistol and you're kimboing them and you're using like anything to like reduce the the um like the hip fire accuracy this gun will not obviously perform well in that scenario but i think it's that's a preferred option because getting shot from like a distance with these weapons or, you know, cause it matter, it's just a matter of covering the base, right. Of, of the, of how the bullets kind of hit. So the 13s will definitely thrive stronger in close combat, but it'll be also checked so that it doesn't work in mid combat. So I think that's good. Okay. Uh, with the launchers, they got the Strela P they remove the activation distance for projectiles. Oh, okay. And then they now explode at any range. This actually, is very interesting. I personally haven't used the Strela at all, but the fact that this was a thing is actually pretty hilarious. So at least now it'll function a lot more up close, which is gonna be nice for scenarios that you wanna you know, clear rooms up close, or at least just get into a crazy scenario. Strela should work in that case scenario. Uh, RPG, small increases space damage amount, and the reduction to space damage range. Okay, so the damage is more concentrated in area, and it hits harder for that. Okay, that makes sense. LNGs. So RPK, this is the one, right? Small reduction to ADS movement speed. Okay, not bad. Uh, reduced mid and long range damage. Reduced damage ranges, small increase ADS time. So I guess they understood that the gun was thriving in long range like a lot. It really was though. Like you can easily, you know, just destroy people from a hundred meter plus away. And the RPK, I guess, needed to kind of take the crown and, you know, see if it can be passed onward i still don't think that the gun is going to be terrible because people are going to look at the nerfs of these guns and and think that the, the gun is terrible now i don't think that that's the case um but again because again you got to remember the weapon tuning is still something that got overall added to the baseline of all the weapon tuning in the entire game so especially because lasers too are, are are tunable so this in turn should still allow the rpk to thrive in some environments but i think that the general populace might look at these small changes or rather just the changes in general and see that the affectation for the gun is going to basically take the crown off of its head so we'll see how it looks into you know perspective going into the game um but rpk getting a nerf makes total sense raw lng gets increased recoil this makes sense because the raw is extremely powerful but again, weapon tuning may not make this seem as too affected by this at all. So again, we gotta you know get into the game and kind of do the science and figure it out. So raw LMG nerf makes sense, and I get that. Um, they didn't nerf any other LMG though, so that's actually pretty interesting. I'll take it. And we got marksman rifles: reduced long range damage, increased upper torso damage, and minimum damage against armor. This makes sense. EBR is. I think even with these changes, it's still going to be a very very good weapon. So don't sleep on this gun. Gun is powerful. It's really crazy, actually. LMS, same thing. They added minimum damage against armor. This, here's the thing. Nobody really knows how strong this weapon is. This weapon is, is powerful. It's a very powerful gun. I love this gun a lot. I was using it literally yesterday, and oh my gosh. I didn't even, um, I, I didn't even, I found it on the floor, and they didn't have a scope, and I shot somebody from like 100 meters away with it, and the damage range was still crazy so that lms is definitely if you put a scope on that gun that gun's gonna it's, it's so powerful great gun so the changes to this though makes sense to me tech m increased side rate of fire that's not bad actually increased upper torso damage and added damage against armor so they essentially buffed the tech m which is fascinating because the tech m right now is in a very very good spot so to make it stronger is going to be very fascinating to see in comparison to the rest of the uh, weapons uh, that are being showcased. So this makes sense. Okay. Melee. Melee got a uh, change. That's weird. Increased lun launching 
sorry, increased non-lunging melee damage range, allow players to hit equipment on the ground with melee while crouched. Oh, interesting. Okay. I'll take it. Melee attacks with non-melee weapons will now require three hits to kill a fully armored enemy instead of two. Okay. Hopefully that stays true to form because I know for certain that this was a, um, this is something that everyone has been heavily talking about. And I feel like they constantly bounce back and forth between two to four and they want to make it the medium at three, but then three still seems too powerful. It's going to just depend on how it comes into play. So we got to, we got to just wait and see. SMGs. Um, the Vaznev got reduced mid to long damage range. That makes sense. It's a SMG. Minibok. Okay. They reduced the damage range on the Minibok. Reduced lower torso damage at close range. Reduced lower body damage at close range at mid range. And they added minimum damage against armor. So I understand it because this gun doesn't need any form of magazine capacity change. It just gets to like thrive the way that it does. So I get it. But, um, I also want to just make sure we can at least keep a mindset that, you know, the mini box still is going to be a good weapon. It's just going to be a better weapon, you know, for the sake of like close range. Cause at mid range, it was pretty, you can almost treat this gun like an assault rifle. It was pretty powerful actually. So mini box getting a um, mid and close range damage nerf is going to be, we'll see how that gun thrives. I hope it's not like terrible though, but we'll find out. Um, the Fennec got a decreased damage overall decrease headshot damage and add a minimum damage against armor see so that's going to be something that's going to really question the nature of the gun as a whole because the fennec is kind of a mixed bag right now the fennec either like destroyed up close which i think was the the usual consensus but also um there were moments where the gun really worked and it didn't work i i, I kind of bounced back and forth with it i honestly stopped using the fennec as an SMG a while ago. Um, I actually resorted to using the Vaznev a lot more frequently, uh, even the Lachman sub, uh, which I just realized isn't here. So I guess that means it's in a healthy spot right now. So we'll see how the Fennec kicks into, into gear once we have these changes kicking, so we'll find out. And we got sniper rifles. The Signal 50 got a reduced sprint out speed, reduced movement speed, reduced long range damage, and small decrease to bullet velocity, which is, see, I don't really know if it needed the, the, the long range damage decrease, or the bullet velocity decrease. But again, I think that these will come into perspective as well with the fact that this tuning has been in increased. So I think that's the trade off for it. But the movement speed and sprint out speed makes total sense because the weapon is like very bulky and heavy, but you can move pretty quick with it. So um, we'll see how the signal 50 plays into perspective because this this is the sniper right now that everyone is running around with. No one is using any of the other ones because um, long story short, if the weapon is a bullet action sniper, they don't one shot. Um, so that's like the problem, I think, currently. None of them have one shot. So the Signal 50 just shoots the fastest, so therefore it would just thrive the best. So I think that's going to be a trade. Hopefully in the future, they can kind of look into changing because that way we can effectively have the guns work more appropriately based on how they shoot. But we'll, you know, that, we'll digress on that later on. Attachments. They reduce the ADS penalty for bipods. Okay. And they fix an issue with choke attachment, choke attachment scaling hip spreading. Okay, it was incorrect. Oh, okay. So I guess the the uh, the choke for the shotguns was doing more than it should have. No, it should have no because they were not doing. So they probably weren't doing as much as they should have. They should now do more. So hopefully this little change for the attachments for shotguns will make them thrive a lot better. Because I, I don't think that shotguns right now are the meta. Vehicles. We got a new personal watercraft. Sick. Naval sea craft capable of swiftly carrying up to two upgrades across any body of water. Uh, adjustments vehicle turrets now cool down faster if they don't overheat they added war truck station to armored truck which is cool they uh added ev charging stations for the uh the hummer <laughs> that's really funny actually um shooting windows no longer damages the vehicle itself that's a nice change make vehicle exits less likely to fail beneath low roofs okay vehicle bug fixes unlimited fuel by leaning out of vehicles i did not know that Fix an issue with the refilling bar not appearing under certain conditions. Uh, vehicle armor not reducing explosive damage properly. Uh, heavy tank tracks for animating properly. Various ways for the player to get out of bounds with vehicle collisions. Fair. And low fuel warning not clearing for passengers when there wasn't a driver. Okay. Operators. We got Ronin. Nice. Okay. Audio. Proximity chat now fades out more effectively over distance. Improves sound effect of reloading underwater. And then they fix a bunch of audio bug fixes. Um... 
social they made adjustments for the social stuff because I know for a fact that people were like hating the friends list thing. So they made it uh, prioritize playable, joinable, and online players higher in the list, which is cool. There's a party finder option within Spec Ops Raid. That's a W. Um, you can send a quick thank you message to squad or teammate after in-game actions. Okay, that's actually really nice. Um, added a search bar icon when inviting players to friends. W. Uh, privacy settings, refresh uh, frequency for recent players. Shortcut to manage block players. Um, player filtering. Okay, offline player options. Channel invites report groups about toxicity. You can report groups for toxicity. That's actually very crazy. Okay. And then there's more social bug fixes. That's a lot of bug fixes. Okay. The UI stuff. Okay, this is the big one, actually. So they improve navigation and organization of camo menu, including clearer tracking of your progress and discoverability of camos you have unlocked. They improved view, rotation, and zoom of operators and weapons in preview. Thank you. Slightly so increased the animation speed of the polyatomic camo. I know that that was a big one because people thought that it just didn't look like it moved. I still didn't think it moved. More Apollo social tab. Uh, added my bundles section to the customized tab that includes all bundles a player owns. Nice. Uh, quick equip option for battle pass bundles and store items. Vertical previews for the store and the gunsmith. Finally, I like that actually. Uh, improved clarity of attachments, blocking logic and gunsmith, and updated loyal UI for support team for changes. Updated. Oh, actually, I like that. Okay. Um, okay, cool. There's some global fixes. Um, there's PC settings, and we got spec up stuff. Um, there's a party finder option. There's, the, there's some fixes for that. Raid episodes. Okay. New modifier for cooperative. They added one in the chamber modifier in the low profile. Okay, that's cool. Um, let's see. Multiplayer. They included infected gun game, grind, and hardcore, which is cool. They added dome, uh, the Valderas Museum, the observatory as a battle map, and the uh, Malik International um, Airport as another battle map, which is cool. And in general, the audio occlusion for multiplayer, I guess this is also the multiplayer stuff. So those reduced bonus for, are the uh, reduced ghosts as well as a perk, okay. Then we got rank play. It's available to anybody who reaches level 16, okay. So they're using the 2023 rule set for Call of Duty League. It's 4v4, you pick weapons and stuff. It's pretty straightforward. There is officially skill rating in there, which is a lot actually. This is definitely going to put a lot of players into the uh, aspect of wanting to play competitively. So that's going to be really, really cool. Um, that's cool. Yeah. So now you get essentially a lot. Of, the thing is, is I kid you not, though, there's like there's like 50 million people going to be competing for this. So it's going to be a lot. Um, there's rank play rewards. Separate player from the SR and skill division is rank. Okay. So all players start at rank one and progress to 50. You increase your rank by getting stars. Each rank or each wing gives a star. Okay. Every five ranks, you progress to ranking, unlock a set of rank rewards. You get a competitive skin, emblem, blueprint, charm, emblem. Oh, see, this is going to be kind of complicated because now I got to play this because I want to get all this stuff actually. Um, Ranked veteran emblem and skin fees and CDL and okay, that's cool. Season two rewards, you get a competitive sticker, you get a blueprint, you get a charm, you get a decal, loading screen, weapon camo. There's a weapon camo for the oh man, that's gonna be nuts actually. Okay. Okay. Oh, iridescent is the thing before two fifty. That's cool. Um Oh, wow. There's a, wow. They actually kind of went like ham on this. I, I got to take a look at this more frequently. Okay. Warzone 2. They added new map for Ashika Island. Uh, Ashika Island is going to be really, really cool. Um, it kind of gives me castle vibes immediately, but I feel like it's going to be a lot more than that too, though. So we'll see. Um, you got the note here for what they said about the island, which is going to be sick. There's seven major points of interest that are listed below. You got farms. You've got town center. This looks familiar. I don't know from what though. You got Beach Club. This also looks familiar. Okay. You got uh, Suki Castle. This is Castle. Yeah, it has to be Castle. Uh, Port Ashika, which is looking really sweet. You got Residential. I like that actually. Shipwreck, which I think is actually, it kind of reminds me of um, Wet Work, like the COD 4 map. In DMZ specifically, players will experience foggier conditions and those of Battle Royale. Players can utilize the fog for cover, but so can your enemies at range. See, now that's fascinating that they're, they're adding weather effects 
in DMZ, but not adding weather effects in Resurgence or for Battle Royale because that way players don't get annoyed by the fog. Because the, the DMZ fog will add to the kind of the um, the cinematics of DMZ, which is cool though. Like DMZ should be more cinematic than Battle Royale because, you know, Warzone is just straight up like competitive out, you know, within that aspect and DMZ kind of sort of isn't. So I get it. Map updates. Um, Almazra, they downed an aircraft from inside the caves. That's interesting, actually. Um, there's a Google map that's been added for better 1v1 combat. Instead of season, okay. That's actually true. I remember that they mentioned that they were going to change it from 2v2 to 1v1. Um, there is solos, duos, trios, quads. Ashika has quads. There's modes. There's resurgence. It's a new limited time mode, apparently. I mean, I think they're going to just change it up a bit in terms of how it works. Um... It sounds very similar to how it normally is, so that's cool. Um, there's two different ways to get a load up some resurgence towards the end of the first circle, public events, and then load up drop markers that you can buy for purchase in the buy station, so that's cool. Um, strongholds are disabled. Okay. Mm. You can do private matches for Battle Royale, which is finally a thing, sorta. All maps, there's a new kill streak. There's a counter UAV, a defensive kill that deploys it on time. Okay. Amazra has redeploy pack. There's new equipment. New tactical equipment will give players another shot at victory. They can be found at ground loot or some buy stations are guaranteed from completing strongholds. Okay. Redeploy. Oh, I, okay. I see. I kind of like read it or thought about it. Okay. Um, the event has a restore honor recovery mechanic. They drop a dog tag upon death per match, which can be either picked up by a squad member or themselves after redeploying. Doing so grants a cash reward as well as a single UAV ping that marks both enemy threats and nearby supply boxes. If a fall, a player recalls their own fallen soldier tags or one belonging to the teammate, they get a 50 meter loot ping. Wow. Interesting. Okay. And there's a new contract called Search and Seizure. Recover a stolen vehicle. Protected by local mercenaries and transport to a safe location for extraction. Avoid the enemy deterrence and ambushes along the way. Okay, that's cool. And this new public event called Data Heist, uh, where laptops with enemy intelligence are spawned around the map, giving players the opportunity to steal data from the intel rewards like UAV and an advanced UAV. Downloading the data, however, is going to take time, and players need to defend the area against AI defenders and other players. Okay, I see. There's redeploy drones to a sense. Oh, they brought back... Um, they brought redeploy balloons back up into the game. Interesting. There's a rusher as a new AI. Wait, really? An aggressive AI combatant that specializes in close quarters combat, utilizing evasive four movements to try and stay close and, mar and close distance for an attack. Has a handgun as a backup and in case the enemy can't be reached for melee and a smoke mini bombs to help. Wow. So they're adding new AI. That's actually kind of nuts, though. Okay. Gameplay adjustments. Um, loot that's spawned across Almadra can be has been adjusted. There's an adjustment to the existing loot pool, and they added the counter UAV as a thing you could pick up from the ground. Okay. Cash autonomy. Players now drop more cash upon dying. They retain more cash upon redeployment. Overall balance changes to the economy so that players can earn more cash per match. There's a reduction to cash rewards slightly for completing contracts. And cash found via ground loot has been increased to compensate for the above changes. So on the ground, it got increased to five. In registers, it went to five. Basic supply boxes, it's five. And then legendaries is eight. Okay. All players will now have a three-play armor vest at all times. Okay. I know that this was something that a lot of people, like, hated and loved at the same time. I know, I can tell you with certainty, though, I think that people are going to miss it. They're going to miss the fact that you have to find the plate. Because it was just a moment where you could find it. I don't know. It just it just seemed really nice, honestly. So we'll see. But I think the, the overall change, though, will make it get that really good Warzone 1 vibe. But... I think people also are going to realize that they're going to want to go back and find these because this, you know, it was an advantage that it was really easy to get and working for it wasn't that hard. But, you know, I don't know. My opinion is different a little bit. Players also spawn with different number of equipment armor base depending on the following. If you infill, you get two. If you gulag redeploy, you get three. And if you resurgence redeploy, you get two. Okay. So right now, players will not be able to customize their own perk packages, but you can't use overclock and bird's eye. Okay. Uh, loadout drop markers are now have unlimited stock at all buy stations and prices have been reduced and prices will scale to squad sizes. So souls is eight, duels is 12, quads is 20, and then trios is 16. So that makes, it's, yeah, okay. That makes sense. Uh, stronghold and black hats have a primary way to earn a redeploy pack. So AI combatant damage has decreased. 
Their shotgun, their assault rifle damage went from 22 from 34. Shotgun pallet damage went to 15 from 17. Uh, AI combatants and strongholds and boxers will evaluate, evacuate the area during three final circles. Okay. Champion's quest now plays an adjustment to difficulty. So this is for the nuke. A new weapon blueprint reward is now available for doing the nuke. Um, the season one SF recon brass strike weapon blueprint has been vaulted. Uh, every other reward is the same thing. Okay. Uh, loot will not drop out of all containers in the world, similar to loot from supply boxes. Okay, so then they went to the old school one, Warzone 1 style, for when you open a, a box, just all the stuff comes out. A limited player also drop loot onto the ground rather than in backpacks, same thing like with Warzone 1. Um, to better redefine a player role within the match, medium large backpacks will no longer be found in the environment. That's an L, but I, I get it. Uh, every player will have the same small backpack throughout the entire game. So they just undid all of the things that they did for this in Warzone. Okay. When players expend an item in their active loadout, stored items from the backpack will no longer fill that slot. The only two items that will still automatically populate the loadout from the backpack are armor plates and ammunition. Okay, so that way you don't stack medical supplies, equipment, and kill streaks. Okay. A second little drop public event has been added, which means that the drops will not happen in the first and fifth circle of the match. So in protection, uh, protection in between 64 to 19 meters of the ground. Interesting. Gulag. Players now want to place a 1v1. The flag control has replaced the jailer as an overtime mechanic. So the jailer is gone. The flag is back. Player loadouts will change as circles progress and can include either assault rifles, SMGs, LMGs as primaries. Handguns are remaining available as secondary. And you get a snapshot as a tactical. There's no shotguns. And cash will now spawn as Glaron loots. Um, you can edit loadouts in pre match lobbies. W. Um, plating improvements, global plating, animation speed has increased by 25%, so now you can plate faster. Movement speed increased while plating, you can now sprint while plating, and you can bust through doors while plating. So this is all the things that people wanted to see before. We got it now, so it's good. Uh, each squad member now has a unique color highlighting their name in pings, which is great, actually. I didn't mind the red, but I also liked the color variation. That was really nice. So, um, Cool. The interrogation reveal mechanic has been changed from an orange outline to a red marker to remain consistent with the similar mechanics, and there's more looting stuff. Uh, combat records are now online as part of Season 2, so the statistics versions in Wars Toad 2 combat record will only be available from the date forward. So literally all the kills and deaths you got from uh, Season 1 didn't count, and now they start counting, which is fine. Uh, you can play again, which is nice. There's bug fixes, and there's DMZ changes. So there's a new island, there's a new weapons case, there's a bomb maker boss. That's actually sick. New reward and new locked in dangerous places. There's a new faction called the Crown, which is very cool. Only people who bought the game can do it, which is fair. Uh, season two reset. The faction mission progress has been reset for season two. Previously unlocked and show weapon subs will be remain unlocked. Cool. Contra weapon inventories have been reverted to starting weapons and key sessions have been emptied. Okay. New mission sets have been revived for season two for all players. These are compromised or comprised of new missions and updated missions and some returning missions. Okay, cool. Um, the key stash can now hold items for missions of transport. Okay. So with the gameplay in DMZ, they overall adjusted the difficulty of missions as the faction mission TH progress. Okay. Contracts have been changed. Okay. The the lethal of the lethality of all across. Oh, the, sorry. The lethality. I, I like read this as Al Al across Al across Al. <laughs> The adjusted lethality of AI across Al Majra, including AI spawning and the accuracy of AI at range. So I guess they made it a little bit more friendly. Uh, locations have been updated in Al Majra. They adjusted plating improvements for them to use it as, uh, faster. And then they did all the stuff too. Ping visibility can be adjusted as well for that. That's good. Okay. And then they uh, fixed a bunch of bug issues. Looking ahead, season two reloaded. Uh, can't wait to drop into the action in season two, but season two really is just from the corner with new content and a limited time to holiday event. There's a new raid episode, new multiplayer modes, and a 6v6 map, which is cool. Season three confirmed. Our teams are hardworking in season three beyond. So, gunfight returns to multiplayer with new maps. Plunder is coming back to Warzone, and Warzone ranked is confirmed. Okay, so I think it makes sense that everyone has been waiting for this as well. Um, so, you know, all the super cracked powerful players are going to love warzone ranked uh i think that's really cool plunder coming back is also going to be great i wonder how that'll come into play with ai i feel like it'll be really sick to see it into fruition so that'll be exciting uh so overall i think um for what it was worth this is actually pretty exciting stuff i'm, I'm looking forward to a lot of the things uh i'm looking forward to seeing 
how the DMZ mode works. I'm looking to see how the AI function now. I love to figure out more weapon tuning stuff. I feel like now I got to kind of go through all my other weapons to see like what stuff is different and what isn't different. So I think all in all, uh, big W all around, the team is hard at work and it kind of showcases its value. So, you know, we obviously have a lot more to look forward to. So hopefully you guys do as well. Let me know what you think about all the changes on the weapon tuning, on the maps and the changes for all the stuff. I don't think they really change any POIs right now as of Warzone 2, except for like some small changes, but I don't think that it's around that time just yet for them to start changing the map like significantly. I think that they got to just keep on cracking at it slowly but surely, but they will eventually, you know, make everything change with time as well, which is of course exciting stuff. So, hey, hope you guys enjoy.